Hello, Brandon right here again with another helping tip for your WatchGuard firewall. This time, I'll be demonstrating to you how to configure dynamic routing with OSPF. Dynamic routing opens up several features that you can take advantage of. For one, all the networks you have connected through that expensive MPLS or ELAN connection will share their routes with one another, allowing them to fully talk without the need for static routes to be added for every new subnet created. Let's look at how quickly this can be set up. In our policy manager, we will go to network and then dynamic routing. First, we'll need to fill the checkbox labeled enable dynamic routing. And then we'll go to the OSPF tab and enable the checkbox here to enable OSPF. This will then allow us to enter in the actual configuration commands. I will include a sample configuration in the description of this video. All you need to do is paste it into the window and edit some of the settings for your particular application. You can also add it into a text document and import it directly into the window. The first line of the configuration file here, router OSPF, enables the actual OSPF configuration. The second line then assigns an ID number to the firewall. Usually it is best to use the local IP address of the firewall where the connection will share the routes through. The next group of lines specify the individual networks that will be advertised through OSPF as well as the network in which it will be shared on. It does not matter the order they are entered and for this simple configuration we'll be assigning everything to a single area. In this case the 192 network is our internal trusted network and the 10 network is our MPLS connection where we want the OSPF route to be advertised. The next set of lines are used to exclude an interface from sharing the OSPF route. So if an interface is listed here, it will listen for the advertised OSPF route, but will not actually send routes through that interface. In this case, all interfaces except for four, which is where our MPS and MPLS network is connected, are excluded from sharing the routes. We can now save the configuration. And it will prompt you to create a policy for OSPF if one is not created already. Now the same process will need to be applied to the other remote firewalls with the location specific information changed, meaning the ID number and the local networks are the primary changes. I've already applied them to my second firewall here, so we can go ahead and open System Monitor and go to the Status Report tab. We'll then be able to scroll or search for OSPF and see the routing table that is currently being shared between the two devices. And right now, since OSPF was just implemented, they're still communicating, so you see we only have our direct attached networks. But just a couple seconds here, we will then see a third route pop in. So now we have access to the third uh, network number three through 10.0.20.254. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Subscribe to the channel to be informed of all future guides. Next time, I'll go through BGP configurations.